All right, so I can even go here. So this is another finance concept that's an overall finance concept that's changed. Uh, I can actually go here and not just look everything up uh, all on one screen. I can actually go to my transaction entry screen. Okay, so what is transaction entry? I'm going to pop this. All right, so this is a completely new session, new concept. So before you had, uh, it's called transaction, is that right? In transactions or maintain transactions, I can't remember what it's called, where you put your invoices in. Maintain transactions, I think, yeah. Ah, yeah, so maintain transactions, several problems with that. One is you can put in any transaction type you want. Big problem, right? If you're an AP person, you're not supposed to be entering journal vouchers, for example, right? Dangerous. So right. what this says, go ahead. No, I just said right, right. Definitely oh, okay. a big pro problem for us. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think you might have had a customization around that. But uh, yeah, we have. but anyway, we have. That, that's no longer necessary, okay? Because what what we'll have here is, You'll have a list of the transaction types that you can enter and no other ones, all right? So uh, another thing about maintain transactions, when you go into that session and you enter a new batch, you have to enter batch header information. Uh, here, what you can do is you, like the reference, for example. Uh, here, what you can do is you can sort of automate that process of creating the batch header by just putting a standard batch reference here. Uh, I put it so that this is journal vouchers. I know it's journal vouchers, and I could put my name there or whatever your standard is, and I could put a date here. So I'm using the American date, sorry. It would probably be for you, it would be DDMMYYY. Right? <laughs> so you can set it up however you like, um, and then I would just change the, the batch reference here. So let me give an example. Uh, when I go here and I change this to, let's say, today's date, I'll do a DD. D-D-M-M-Y-Y-Y-Y to do it like the Europeans. Uh, so let's say it's 26 dash 02. Let's see, let me get rid of this. Uh, 2015. All right. So I can change the entry date. This is, this is all header information. I could change the year, whatever the case may be. This is all header level information again. Now you see, it says line type new. Okay, what that means is this is the one that you click on to enter a new batch, this line type new. And you'll see here there are several batches. So what's nice about this is all the batches that are open for you are listed here. Okay, so I've got 39 and 40 open, and you can see their status. So this one's ready to finalize. This one's still free. So it's either empty or, or whatever the case may be. Uh, so in maintain transactions, you would have to actually page through or look up your batches to see, you know, which ones are open, which is kind of a pain in the butt. These are listed right here for you, okay? So in order to go into one, all I'd have to do is click on it right here in the details. So it pops right in there. But what I want to show you here is I'm going to open up a new batch. So all I do here is when I've got all my information straight that I want for the header, I just click this button and up pops a new, a new journal entry, okay? So it's created all of that stuff, uh, the batch header stuff automatically for me, okay? So what I can do here is I can actually just enter my journal entry and you'll notice this has tons and tons of new functionality here for LN. Uh, perfect example is in BOM5, you could set up recurring and reversal entries, but you had to go out into a separate session, uh, and then you had to do a set up a reversal, and you had to have the, you essentially have to re enter the journal entry to use that functionality. So it, it would reverse on a date in the future. But this is very cool because you can put in the entry and you can just click reversal. So if it's a, a recurring or it's a reversal entry, you can just click here and then put in the period. Um, and then you'll see if it's been reversed, you'll actually see the 
year and period pop up here in the reversal document number. Very slick. Um, okay, so this is header level information. So you'll see the debits and credits here. In bottom slide, the screen was configured in a, in a kind of a, a way that didn't make it easy to look up your total debits and credits. So you have it here, so you know that you have a balance entry because each time I update a line here on the multi-line, then it will also update the balance. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you something really, really slick. Okay? Uh, so what I'm going to do here is here's my little export button, but I have a little drop down here, and I have an import. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go find a file here that I've set up ahead of time. Keep my fingers crossed that this actually works. I'm going to go find, ah, here we go, JV import test. All right, so in Bond 5, you have the import journal voucher, which is a real mess because you you have header and lines and you have a text file and you've got to put it out on the server and so on and so on. Um, I don't know. I, I think, Dan, did you, did you guys do a customization for importing journals? Yes, we do have. Okay. So how does that work? Does that Can you do it from Excel or do you have to create a text file? You have to put it on the – how does it work? So we can do it from Excel. Uh, it's also flexible in that sense that you can define what the delimiters are, so whether it is semicolon, dub, or whatever. Um, you can store the file on your local machine, and the system picks it up from there, transfers it uh, to the barn environment, and from there it's loaded into the system. So we have okay. this for journal vouchers, for AP entries, and for AR entries, and uh, also, I think, for cash transactions. So okay. it's, it's, okay. it's you, you can work with it. It's it's not that bad, right? Okay. Well, what happens if you do something like you mistyped a ledger account number? What would happen to it? Um, you would get an error message, so uh, written into a file. I mean, it's it's let's say it's it's pretty similar to that uh, standard logic we know from LN, but uh, of course, I mean, everything uh, had to be developed, right? So it's, it's right. not generic right. in that sense as we know it from LN. It's of course not that convenient, but uh, given the fact that uh, we had no better way to do it <laughs> from that perspective, it's, 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 not, it's not too bad. It's yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. I, you know, I, I wasn't trying to rag on your uh, Customizations. I, I think in general they've been done very, very well. It's just, uh, yeah. it's just where we, where we have standard functionality now. We, we we can take advantage of it, and this is one huge area. So, for example, Definitely. you can just take your yeah. yeah. So this is going to run the DAO. It's going to run the DAO in the background. So if I made a mistake, I mistyped the ledger account or something like that, it's going to give me an error message right in the in the um, file. And I, I can actually mess it up here <laughs> so we can see that. But right now I'm just going to do an import. And I want to open the file in Excel after I do the import because I want to see if there were any, uh, you know, error messages or whatever. So it's going to tell me if it runs into any errors. A great example is the ledger account or, or the dimensions not being there or something like that if they're mandatory. You get it. Any any error that you would get um, when you're entering it directly into the session, it will actually test that because it actually runs the DAO. Okay, so it's very slick. It's actually you can think of it as just automatic loading of what you would type. So um, let me just go ahead and do this. So I have several options here. One is I can overwrite existing records. So what that means is let's just say. Uh, we already had something in my list in my lines here that uh, was was a record that I want to upload. It's already there. Now I could what I could have done is I could have changed the information. So let's say for instance I changed the amount in the upload file uh, and I want to replace it. So this is the overwrite that allows you to do that. You can also obviously add new records if you like. 
And you can, if there was text on it, you could actually replace it with different text. So let me go ahead and run this at import and see if it works. Ooh, looks good so far. Six rows process. What do you know? Look at that. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm sorry, I get excited about this stuff. <laughs> okay, so you see I had a, a preset entry that worked. Um but you'll see here uh it it came straight in, but it also did the checks. So all of these are valid ledger accounts and valid uh let's say dimensions here and but the amount you can see here the amount is not balanced so i can i can what i can do is i can change it right here and i can balance it i could add text if i wanted to anything that i could do when i'm manually entering it and then i can go out and this is all new Right here in this session, I can, instead of starting up a finalization run and, and going in there and picking the batch and finalizing it, I can actually go here and I can take that batch, I can highlight it, and you see right up here, is that one balanced? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's the free one, sorry. This is the one that I just created, and it's ready for finalization, I can see right here. Uh, and all I have to do is up here, there's an option to finalize. <laughs> Hopefully it will. Reese is taking a minute. Woo, look at that. Okay. So you can see here's my, uh, the, all of the reports, the journal reports come up in separate tabs up here. So I can just, because I printed the screen, finalize successfully. There's the summary report. And there's the journal report. Okay. Great. So pretty easy. Again, pretty much everything you need is right on the one screen. And you're only seeing the transaction types that you can 